What is going on, everybody? It is March 19th, unfortunately Monday, but what can you do? I feel pretty good. I think I'm back in business now. Uh, we've got an awesome slate. Eight games, tons of value, a lot of it in the early games, so we should have good news. Kings-Pistons game, I don't really care about regardless, so it's perfect that it's at 10 o'clock. Uh, live stream tonight, starting at 6 absolutely um i'm just ready to get back into the swing of things it really took until like late saturday to feel better it was seriously like eight days of awfulness I missed like three and a half days of work it was just bad and now i feel fantastic so i'm ready to do this let's go first game up uh calves hosting the bucks calves are two and a half point favorites at home uh, they have the second highest implied total. Um, you know, not the best matchup positionally. You know what I should do? What's So, 16 is the max. Eh, fuck it. It's fine. Um, let's look at Cleveland. As of right now, we don't have any news on uh, all of the Cavs dudes. So, the assumption is that Corver will play, and I think that's a pretty safe one. He was out for like a personal reason. Um, expecting, I also have Nance in and somebody else that missed Nance, Corver, Hood. Hood is in. So this one could change, but with it being a seven o'clock start, you know, we'll know all of that information before tip, or at least we should, which would be infuriating if we didn't. Um, First up is Braun, and I don't really know what his history is against uh, against Giannis. <laughs> Might as well look at them both at the same time. So, you know, went for 60 twice into the 43s. Wasn't the best last year or the year previous. How about Giannis against Cleveland? Okay, so Giannis has gone for 60 all three times. Did it once last year. Two other games at 50, but that was sort of the expectation. So history says Giannis. Um, you know, matchup-wise says Giannis. LeBron is 13-1. Uh, I have to assume that Giannis will be a bit higher owned than LeBron. You know, obviously I haven't switched over to Milwaukee yet, but I can only assume that Giannis' salary is dramatically lower than Bron's. Uh, yeah, I think those grades look good. 13-1 um, is is a lot of money to pay up for. Uh, you know, obviously Braun has gone for 70, 70, and 70 in his last three. But he has to for you to get where you need to be. I mean, 5x is 65. That's great for cash. Um, but for a GPP, meh. It's going to be difficult. You know, I'd rather spend that money elsewhere. Um I think that looks fine. Uh, Jeff Green, you know, been playing big minutes. Uh, 34, 33, and 27 fantasy points in his last three. Still only uh, 4,900. Um, I think a C on an eight-game slate is a, is a pretty solid rating for him. Um, I'd actually prefer having Jeff Green in my lineup than, Le than LeBron if we're talking about just, you know, likelihood of pro providing value. Uh, I like Jeff Green's a much better GPP play than LeBron tonight. Um, Nance, 7,500 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. It looks really good on DK. If we get word that he's definitely playing, um, especially if we get word that he's starting, uh, I think that he looks great on DraftKings. Um, nothing crazy to worry about defensively at center, so you know, I'd be more than okay with having some Nance. Not sure I'd want any part of the rest of the guys. Uh, if we find out that like Hood is out, you could probably talk me into Clarkson, but 4,500 might still be a little too expensive, even though that C rating is coming out. I just don't see a ton of upside in the number unless we know more dudes are out. So for me, my focus would be, oddly enough, in GPPs, uh, Jeff Green more than anybody else on the Cavs. Uh, if you were playing cash, I'd be able to focus on LeBron a little bit, and then you just want to keep an eye on Nance. Um, to make sure that he's going to be in the lineup. If he's not, 
I don't think it really opens up anybody crazily. Um, but if he's playing, uh, I definitely think that he's in play. Uh, let's go to Milwaukee. First day drinking coffee in like a week too. Sorry for the slur, but damn, that was good to start today. I've been avoiding it while I was sick. It just doesn't really help with the uh, um, staying hydrated. So Giannis is 12-5. No shit. That's kind of annoying. 10-8 uh, on DK. Um, yeah, given the two, I prefer Giannis. Uh, Giannis coming off of two monsters, a 67 and a 74. Uh, obviously a much better matchup. A 12-5 price tag is a little higher than I was hoping for. I was kind of hoping for like 11-9 or something. I'm wondering, did they bump that just for this game? Now he was at 12. Okay. It's reasonable to bump that 500 bucks after those two games. Uh, yeah, I prefer Giannis to LeBron. I would want to have more Giannis than LeBron. Um, what does the rest of the small forward look like? Okay, so center and small forward are the only places that have guys over 10k so you'll probably need one of the two um just to make lineups work but we we'll see just because of where the value is tonight um it's going to be pretty natural to pay up for Giannis or lebron like i said i prefer Giannis. uh middleton i just never get this dude when he blows up 7,400 is fine. Um, it's got a great matchup. I kind of want to bump Middleton a little bit. Nope, too far. Way too far. Yeah, that makes me feel a little bit better. I think Middleton's in line for a good game. Um, I'd like to think that Bledsoe is in line for a good game. But 8000 on FanDuel is so expensive. Two straight games in the 40s, which is great. but And five in his last eight. I think Bledsoe looks like a really nice cash point guard. I don't necessarily see it as much in a GPP. And then after that, no, no thanks on Snell, uh, Henson, or Jabari. Um, give a little bit of a boost to Eric Bledsoe. Yeah, that looks good. It's going to be a fun game. Uh, you know, both teams obviously care. Uh, it's always good to get those sorts of games at the 7 o'clock hour. We head to the Pacers. Uh, Indiana's hosting the Lakers. 109.5 implied total, which is fourth, uh, four point favorites um, at home. Let's see, we got Oladipo at 9 1, 8,700 on DK. Oh, sorry for the sniffles, guys. Look, I'm not totally back, let's be clear here. I just feel like I'm like a normal person again. Mm. Ah, fuck it. Who cares? Ola Depot, 9-1. Uh, solid matchup. Let's see what they've been doing against shooting guards. Oh, yeah. It's an average of uh, most recent 10 and most recent 40. So, four and a half big games, three and a half duds, one monster. Um... Yeah, I think that that's a great spot. Has not been good lately, though. 9,100. His salary needs to tumble. Back up to 9,100. I just wouldn't be too worried about the Lakers. Yeah, I'd be fine with Oladipo. Um, especially with value tonight. You can get to him pretty easily. Uh, I do have Miles Turner in... Um, he's questionable right now. Sabonis is out. Uh, so keep an eye on that. Um, 
Otherwise, let's look at Collison, 5,700 on FanDuel, 4,800 on DK. Uh, slowly but surely ramping up the minutes. I've got him for 29 here. Uh, went for 33 fantasy points uh, a couple nights ago. I'd be more than okay having Collison on DK at 4,800. That's a great price. He's definitely the best play on Indiana on either site. Um, I'm fine with him on FanDuel, just, you know, not as much. Uh, I'd be fine with Thad on FanDuel as well. You know, two straight games, 34 and 39 recently. If he does that, that's well over value. You're looking at 6 plus X, you know, almost 7 and 8. So I'm fine with Oladipo. I'm fine with Thad Young. Um... If we know that Miles Turner is going to start, I'm fine with Miles Turner, at least on FanDuel. Uh, if he's out, uh, probably doesn't change anything for me. But uh, Collison would be my most interesting play anywhere, and that would be on DK. Uh, I'll have a little bit of Oladipo, Collison, Thad Young, and Turner if he plays. Now, for the Lakers... Lakers 105.5 implied total, which is 11th. Uh, tough matchup against point guards, tough matchup against small forwards, tough matchup against power forwards, which is kind of scary. But Lakers pricing is just insane right now. I'm going to give it a good sniffle. There we go. Feeling good now. And I took it off of mute. I'm learning, guys. It only took, what, four months? To learn how to use the mute button. By God, we got there. All right, so KCP. 6,500. Um, not for me, probably. Although it's supposed to be a good matchup against shooting guards. Five and a half big games, three duds, and two and a half monsters recently. Uh, makes me feel like I need to at least bump KCP a bit. He's not someone that stands out to me entirely, but maybe he should. I think he'll probably just be in sort of the uh, the wheel of rotating shooting guards tonight. Fuck, oh, that's so good. Uh, Lonzo, 7,500. Now that's one I definitely like on the surface, but am scared of. Because they've been icing point guards. Five and a half duds. Oh, boy. Nobody getting a big game. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to have to knock Lonzo back a little bit. I'm a little scared there. Seventy five hundred is just a lot. I think Lonzo's relatively safe for cash. I don't see this as a, a big time GPP game for him. Um, Kuzma, sixty-two hundred needs thirty. I mean, he is a GPP guy. He can be in the mid twenties or he can be in the forties, which is fine for me at that salary. Um, I'm gonna have a decent amount of Kuzma. Uh, just for the upside. You know, he's got 46 here, 43 here. Even this 32 would work. Um, I'm willing to take my chances there. Yeah, I'll be fine with that. And then Julius Randle, 7,400 on FanDuel, 8,300 on DK. It's rare that you see a $900 difference between the two sites going the other way. Um... You know, Randall put up 44 here, 40, 68, 41. This is all in the past two weeks, although I think that March 3rd one's going to fall off when I change this filter that I haven't changed. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, there it goes. Either way, um, I think Julius Randall is an incredibly safe proposition here. Uh, center is not much you need to worry about if we're considering with center. He's at least 50 50. Um, I'm fine rolling out a bundle of Julius Randle. 
yeah, uh, it's just that's too good of a price on FanDuel. Uh, he's neutral on DK, but that seventy four hundred dollar price point is is pretty nice. Especially because he fits in a power forward. Lots to like there. Yeah, I'm a big fan. Then Brooke Lopez, 6,900 on FanDuel, 6,400 on DK. Um, I mean, keep an eye on the Miles Turner news. I definitely like Brooke Lopez a little bit more if Turner's out. Uh, needs 35 to hit 5x. Probably just a GPP guy for me. Three games in the 40s, you know, two games in the 20s. Um, I'm willing to take flyers on him, but I wouldn't go heavy. And I really, I likely wouldn't go very heavy on Isaiah just because of the way that they match up against point guards. So yeah, tons to like on the Lakers. Uh, they're definitely a little underpriced on FanDuel. Um, I'm going to have a lot of Randall and Kuzma uh, neutral amounts of KCP, Lonzo, Brooke Lopez, and Isaiah, but just a lot to like there. Now we go to Philly. Philly, 115.5 implied total. Number one on the slate today. Uh, they are eight point favorites at home against the Hornets. What seed are they set up for right now? So they're, they're projected for the three seed right now. A game ahead of the Cavs and Wizards. So yeah, they want this bad. Um, you know, Hornets are sunk. It doesn't really matter here. But they're still playing like they're not. So I feel like some funky stuff happened against the Hornets for them in the past. All right, so Embiid went for 50 first week of March, 30 in the second week of March. Ben Simmons, nothing crazy. Covington, did he go nuts on one of them? Yeah, I went for 40 in that second one. I thought so. <laughs> That's something to keep in mind considering no Nick Batum tonight. Uh, if we start with Ben Simmons, 9,700 on FanDuel, 8,500 on DK. Uh, coming off the 55-point game, but, I mean, that's that's great. Uh, you need that to happen again. It's a lot of fantasy points. I think the much more likely scenario is all of these games that he has in the 40s. He's overpriced. Uh, this one's not for me. Um, I don't have a ton of interest in it, especially because Charlotte's not bad defensively so I don't want to force Ben Simmons in I don't expect him to pop up a lot for my for me uh Saric 7200 on FanDuel uh 6100 on DK much much more playable on DK um I don't find him to be playable at all on FanDuel you would need 36 just to hit 5x He's done that twice, basically on the number. There's no, there's no GPP value for Dario Saric. Now Embiid on a bit of a heater, back-to-back 50-point -back games, and then he followed that up with a 60. Um, it's coming in on two days rest, which I would assume is great for him. But let's take a look and see how he's done with rest. Where is it at? Usage boosts on off. Well rested. No players with two days rest. So no, nothing. That's just great. Rest advantages. I guess they've been rested too. Well, what do you know? Um, ninety uh, ten nine for Embiid. That's so much. Like at that price, those two fifty point games are bad. Uh, I like him a lot more at 9,500 on DK. I think that B rating for Embiid on FanDuel is is spot on. Um, I mean, you need him to hit 55. That's healthy. This just doesn't, and you know, this game shouldn't necessarily be like a track meet. Um, 
Yeah, I don't... I'll have a couple lineups with Embiid, but he's not going to be a focus for me. Covington at 6,000. Uh, finally had a bit of a crap game after going 40-30-40-33-30. Uh, you know, that's five straight games at value or greatly exceeding value at this price. Um Went really ham on them in those other two games. I'm going to give him a little boost. Because I think he's a little underrepresented. I like him a little bit more than that D rating. Um, and at small forward, you know, it's always easier to find guys. Wait, I don't mean that like I said it. I feel like a lot of guys uh, look the same in that small forward range. So I do like him more than what that price is showing. I don't know. I'm just rambling. Uh, no thanks on Redick or Bellinelli or Ilyasova. Uh, Redick went for 33 in the last game. But, you know, at a 5,000 price point, oof, you need a lot more than that to be happy. Well, not happy, but he's not for me. We'll go to Charlotte, where we're going to see a bunch of value. As I said at the beginning, uh, no Nick Batum, so value town on Jeremy Lamb. Walker, 7,800 on FanDuel, 7,800 on DK. Um, you know, it's a tough matchup. Uh, Philly, the best against point guards and small forwards, second best against centers, you know, Almost, you know, we're, you know, what was that, 1650? Fourth best against power forwards. So it is a tricky matchup for Kemba. Um, how did he do in those other two games? You know, hit value and then had a, a major dud, one of nine from the field. Um, the B rating is fine. I won't focus on him. I do like the price. There's definitely uh, the ability for Kemba to have a big game at 7,800. Um, he's just not going to be a focus of mine. I feel sort of similar about Dwight, although let's take a look and see how he did in those games. Went big and one big one, one dud. Cool. I'd lean more on the dud side heading into this one. Did go for 60 a couple nights ago. Mm. And a couple nights before that. But uh, as these games start to get uh, less and less important for the Hornets, I get the sense that uh, they'll be less and less important for Dwight. So if he doesn't get his touches early, he could be a ghost. The one guy you need to pay attention to is Jeremy Lamb. Uh, with Batum out, Lamb's going to see a ton of minutes. 4,800 on FanDuel, 4,200 on DK. Grades out as a straight A. And I love it. I'm going to have an overwhelming amount of Jeremy Lamb, as will most people he will likely be one of the highest owned people on the slate tonight. Um, as he should be. Uh, he's at small forward, a place where it's usually hard to find guys to play. And he is the best value by a long shot. Um, just because of that position, he's going to be owned out the ass. And that will really open up other things. It'll certainly open up... Con a you know, you're going to see a ton of combos of LeBron and Lamb and Giannis and Lamb. Um, but uh, he's a great play on, in both formats. Uh, Kaminsky, you can talk me into it, you know, just because there's extra minutes out there. Um, you know, has the ability to get it up in like the mid-20s, which could get you to value. Uh, not a ton of upside, though. I wouldn't go crazy there. Um, and I don't really want anything else on the rest of this game. Uh, I don't know if I said it. 107.5 implied total. Actually 7th on the night. But really difficult matchup against Philly. The only guy that I really want to have a ton of is Lamb. And that is purely a price play based on Batum being out. So that's the 7 o'clock games. I will bounce over to the 7.30 starts. Uh, Brooklyn Nets <laughs> hosting the Memphis Grizzlies. I think I made this lineup. I could be wrong. There were three no lines. No, nope, this one's real. 
So Brooklyn Nets are four and a half point favorites at home against the Grizzlies. Nets, uh, sixth highest implied total. Amazing. Uh, Grizzlies, really good defending the point guard and center positions. Um, they're whatever against small forward and power forward, but good matchup for shooting guards. Uh, I do feel about the Nets <clears throat> exactly like these grades look. Uh, they basically look like my grades in college. C, D, 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 F. If one of, the, one of these guys leaves the game and gets an early withdrawal, that will look even more more like my... Uh, my What the fuck do you call those things? Transcript. It'll look more like my transcript. I almost said diploma, and that wouldn't have made a lick of sense. Uh, D'Angelo Russell, 6,900 on both sites. Yeah, I mean, I'd be cool with that. Has the potential to get into the 40s, which is what you're looking for. Um, you know, could be a dud. I wouldn't really trust him in cash all that much, but three games in the 40s in the past two weeks. I think Russell looks probably the best of anybody on this squad right now. Uh, Damari Carroll, back-to-back 30-point games. Uh, you would need it again. Um, I'd be okay with it, but it's not something I'm going to be looking for. <sighs> no thank you on Alan Crabb. 5,200 coming off of, you know, missing this back-to-back -back set. He's a GPP flyer only. A Levert. I'm just not interested in at all. I really don't have any interest in any of these guys. Although I guess I should talk about Rondé Hollis Jefferson. 6,600. Uh, coming off a 37-pointer, a 44, a 33. He had 45 a little bit before that. Uh, he's been playing a lot better. Um, 33 would be value. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. Yeah, uh, I'm probably underrepresenting him right now. He was just not as good as it seems earlier in the season. I'll give him a little bit of a bump. Um, Besides Russell, I think Rondé Hollis Jefferson is the only other guy that I would have uh, any legitimate interest in. It's just not really the game for me. Uh, Memphis, oh god, 103.75 implied total is 13th. Um, great matchup for point guards, power forwards, and centers. Terrifying matchup for shooting guards. Um, God, this team is just... I'm so excited for the season to end so that I cannot talk about the Memphis Grizzlies anymore. It's just depressing as shit. I don't think I would go if I had free tickets and lived in Memphis, which is fascinating. All right, Tyreek Evans. 8,000 on FanDuel, 8,000 on DK. I mean, he's put up 40 in the two games that he's been back. Uh, if you want to play him, go ahead. I, I... I would understand it. I'll have a neutral amount of exposure to him, but who knows how this game shakes out. No thank you on Dylan Brooks. Uh, Marc Gasol at 8500 is probably too expensive on FanDuel. 7900 I can see it just from the ability to play more than one center, uh, but that's not really a place that I'm looking. Um... Cough here. Yeah, I just. I guess Jamichael Green at 5,900 is probably in play, although with Evans back, it really pushes Green down the line. You know, if you want to use Green or Martin in GPPs, I get it, but you don't really want anything here. It's really just. Evans, and that's particularly on FanDuel. Um, on DK, it's a little bit more open, but I'm not a huge, huge fan here. I guess I need to bump Jamichael Green and Marcus Gasol a little bit just for the matchup. 
I'll have them in marginal amounts. Then we go to Miami. Uh, Heat hosting the Nuggets. Uh, I made this lineup. It's not out yet. Uh, no Wade, no Whiteside. Uh, I've got it neutral right now. 106 for each team, which would be nine, tied for ninth. Um, it'll be somewhere in that area. Um, you know, the, the guy you really need to look at is Bam. For some strange reason, he's 3,600. Uh, he played 35 minutes last night. Or not last night, last game. I uh, played 27 the game before that, even 25 before that, which is, uh, you know, a perfectly acceptable range, and he's 3,600 on FanDuel. He's going to be dramatically owned. Uh, big time, big time, big time ownership there, and I love it. Um, as for other guys, uh, it's going to be pretty tough on DK. Everybody is priced uh, pretty tight. You know, you've got Goran Dragic. Uh, at 6700 on FanDuel, $600 cheaper than on DraftKings. Um, Miami with a really good matchup at shooting guard, small forward, and center. Uh, you know, Dragic at 6700 to me, is, is probably one of the better plays at point guard. I really like that. Uh, I don't see as much appeal at 7300 on DK, but I'm going to end up having a, a solid amount of him... Um, on FanDuel. Uh, Ellington at 4000 Uh, you know, you're paying for, you're, you're hoping for a heater. Went for 28 a couple nights ago, 25 a few nights before that. Um, that's what you're looking for. You know, the, the Nuggets do give up threes in the corner, not necessarily Ellington's bag as much. He's a little bit more above the break. Um, so I'd be fine with Wayne in a GPP, but nothing crazy. Um, Justice Winslow at 5,400 is passable. Uh, he has hit 40 in you know the last two weeks, hit it twice. Um, this doesn't necessarily strike me as that time where he's going to do it again, but you know it's a good matchup for him. So again, he's a GPP guy for me only. Josh Richardson at 5,600. Uh, his minutes are down. I mean, he got 32 here, but... Went 16, 21, and 22 in the three games before that. 19 earlier in this two-week stretch. I can't trust him because of the minutes. He's only a GPP flyer. Big focus is going to be Bam. Um, I think James Johnson has a decent chance to provide value at 4,500 on FanDuel. Uh, he went for 39 in his most recent game, 47 in the game before that. It's a monster return on 4,500. Uh, there's going to be a lot of ownership in Bam Adebayo and James Johnson tonight, and with good reason. And I will be uh, trumpeting most of that. Uh, Kelly Olynyk is fine. Um, last four games, 36, 26, 31, 36. He's at 5,400. All of those games would have been value except for that 26. So uh, having a lot of Bam, James Johnson, and Kelly Olynyk makes perfect sense to me. Now for Denver, uh, we know no Gary Harris for at least a week. Um, it's a tough matchup, but they're all double-digit, which is bad uh, individual matchups, so something to keep in mind there. Uh, Paul Millsap is definitely overrated by my numbers. He just has so little data with Denver that he's being buoyed by a lot of uh, his hawk shit. I want to knock him down a bit so he doesn't grade out so preposterously. That's about as good as I can get it to. How has he played this year? How how off is it? Yeah, he's he's high by like a full two and a half points. Although uh, Fantasy Cruncher likes him. So Will Barton. You know, he had been good with Gary Harris out, 6,600 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. I just really don't like the defensive matchup. Um, I think Barton is fine. Uh, I think Wilson Chandler is fine. Um, you know, I'm going to have a decent amount of Paul Millsap just because of the price. Um, but he's been just in the mid-20s or low-20s and his past four even when he did get up into 36, 
you know, that's barely value. Um, I might have to neuter him even a little bit more. I think that that's just too high for him. I don't really like the way that the numbers are coming out. He's, he's just, there's too much Paul Millsap Atlanta in my data. And that's because he's played like 20 games for Denver or whatever the hell it was. Uh, not a ton of interest in Jamal Murray. Needs 35. Does have two 40-point games, so I'm okay with it in the GPP, but that's probably it. Now, you would expect Jokic to just go crazy here. Um, he's 10,000 on FanDuel, 8,800 on DK, which is just great. Uh, went for 50 in his last game, which would be value. Hit 68. He had two other 55-point games. Uh, 10, 10,000 is a lot of freight, but there's enough value out there that if you want to pay up at center, I think that's fine. And, uh, you know, if I'm Jokic, I'm not really worried about Bam or Kelly Olynyk trying to guard me. So the only other guy you'd be worried about a little bit is James Johnson. But, you know, this could be a game where Jokic is a, a big time facilitator from the nail. Yeah, so I would prioritize uh, Jokic and Will Barton, and then I'm going to have a, a solid amount of Millsap and probably a little bit of Chandler in GPPs. Next one. Not exactly the classic that it used to be. Uh, Knicks, 109 implied total. They are five-point favorites at home against the Chicago Bulls. Uh, Courtney Lee expected to be back, had been missing time, a uh, death of a family member or family friend, something along those lines. Um, it should be a good matchup. Uh, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, and center are first, second, second, and third. Even sixth for point guard. Uh, the Bulls are just a shit show on defense. But the Knicks are really bad at scoring. Um, I like Tim Hardaway here. Just because dude's going to shoot and the Bulls are bad. But, you know, be prepared for one of those really atrocious Tim Hardaway games. I mean, look. He hasn't been shooting as ridiculous lately. You know, 3 of 13. 8 of 18. Dude shoots like I would shoot if I were in the NBA. Uh, with that said, I think he makes for a great GPP play today. I feel the same sort of way about Beasley. Beasley went for 53 a couple nights ago. Uh, he's 5,700 on FanDuel, just a great price. Uh, 6,600 on DK, so you can pretty safely avoid him there. Um, but I'd be willing to take a flyer on Beasley in the GPPs. That's kind of how I feel about everybody here. You can't really... Like, Cantor got 15 minutes in the last one. O'Quinn got 17 minutes. They played the uh, the Unicornet 16 minutes. Isaiah Hicks got 25 minutes. So I'm having a lot of trouble uh, trying to figure out sort of the minutes rotation. I think the safest bet is to just go with Hardaway um, and not try to overcommit here. So I'm going to have little bits of Beasley, Moutier, Cantor, and that's probably it. Maybe Trey Burke. Um but very little bits, only just GPP guys. Uh, I think everybody on this squad is just GPP only. You want to avoid these guys in cash. But uh, Tim Hardaway is probably the only guy I'll look at. Now the Bulls, no Chris Dunn, no Zach Levine, no Larry Markkinen, uh, nobody that I want to watch. Um, it's just, look at those 10 names. Denzel Valentine, Campaign, Bobby Portis, Felicio, Antonio Blakeney, Nawaba, Noel Vonley, Paul Zipser, Jerry and Grant, Justin Holiday. Holy shit, they're bad. Like, Blakeney, Campaign, Jerry and Grant, Zips. Like, none of these guys should even be on rosters. <laughs> oh my god, they're so atrocious. Nawaba got cut by the Lakers. I don't know. Um, unfortunately, it means there's a ton to like. Uh, Knicks have actually been good on D, except for at small forward and power forward. But first guy we need to look at, 
Denzel Valentine, 6300 on FanDuel, 5700 on DK. Uh, it's an incredible price for him on DraftKings. Uh, went for 54 in his last game. He's been getting basically every minute that he can handle uh, with these dudes out. Uh, I'm more than okay with having Denzel Valentine tonight. Um, probably just a GPP guy. Uh, I'd be a little nervous about having him in cash, and I think there's enough value out there otherwise. But, you know, you have to you have to entertain it. Campaign is 4,900 on FanDuel, 4,700 on DK. Played 32 minutes in the most recent game. Uh, no reason to suspect that he wouldn't play 30 minutes again. Went for 27. It's exactly what you're looking for. Um, I think he grades out really well. I do want to knock him down a little bit because I think that's a little too high for him. Um, but, you know, I'll have a lot of campaign to open up uh, bigger salary guys. Portis is fine at 7,000. Um, went for 34, 34, 37, 43. It's just solid. Uh, he's going to get you in and around there. I'd be I'd be really okay with Portis in a cash game tonight. Um, I mean, if you want to get really weird, you can run out Blakeney on DK at 3,200. Uh, no, I'm not going to stand up right now. Watch, sorry. Um, but you can really play most of these guys in GPP scenarios. If Vonley plays, I think he's fine at 3,800 on FanDuel. Um, you know, I, I probably wouldn't have a ton of Nawaba, but Denzel Valentine, Payne, Portis, uh, you know, little bits of Felicio are probably okay. Um, there's just a lot there because they don't have bodies and all these guys are priced like they're terrible because they're terrible. Uh, Portis would be my only real big focus on in a cash game, though. Uh, I think he's the most likely to play big minutes and be decent. Two games left now, and boy, oh boy, are they uh, interesting. Not quite. Uh, Spurs hosting the Santa Cruz Warriors. 106.25 implied total for the Spurs. They are 6.5 point favorites at home. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, eight, eighth highest implied total. I just, yeah, Lamarcus Aldridge is ninety two hundred. Um, he went for fifty nine in his most recent game. I wouldn't expect that again. Uh, I'm not really interested in him at that price point. And then the rest of the dudes on the Spurs are like a grab bag. Kyle Anderson played fourteen minutes in the most recent game after playing thirty four. Bryn Forbes is getting minutes again. Uh, normally this would be a terrible matchup for Powell, but since everybody that has any basketball talent is out for the Warriors, I think that you can, uh, you'll can probably see more Powell against like their traditional centers. Um, I don't really want any part of any of this. I don't trust the Spurs. You know, Danny Green played 33 minutes in his most recent game, 30 before that. He played 14 a week ago. A week ago today, he played 14 minutes. I, I don't, like, Danny Green can play any amount of minutes tonight, and I'd believe it. So if you're going to use guys on the Spurs, they almost have to be in GPPs. And I think LaMarcus Aldridge is overpriced. Um, even if he, like, 59 is just a dream game for him. You'd be happy that you got it, but, man, the chances of him repeating that feel like they're really low. Uh, I think the Spurs are almost totally a stay away for me just because I don't trust them uh, Santa Cruz Warriors 99.75 implied total is 16th that is dead last I don't even know how to like how do you hash this out uh, so Draymond is 8500 on FanDuel 9600 on DK I mean you can probably not play him on DraftKings but went for 50 in both of these games, uh, I'm okay with having Draymond in uh, on FanDuel. Um, I think that he can still get into the mid to high 40s, and you'll be happy. Uh, Quinn Cook's price is up. He went for 40 in his past two games. Um, he's at 5,200 now. I don't expect another 40-point barrage out of him. I don't really want to focus on anybody in Golden State. Uh, again, much like what I said for San Antonio, all these guys are GPP guys only. So if you want Quinn Cook, 
Nick Young, Iguodala, Looney, Livingston, any of the big dudes, West Bell, Pachulia, you got it. You're taking flyers on them, and that's it. Uh, there's not going to be any consistency. Um, there's not any real trust. Uh, the Warriors are in autopilot right now. They're getting themselves to the playoffs. And uh, look, somebody on this thing is probably going to be in the winning GPP lineup. You know, Kavon Looney might go for 40 or something stupid at 2% ownership. Um, I don't think that this is any place where you can really focus outside of Draymond on FanDuel. And then finally, the Sacramento Kings hosting the Detroit Pistons. 100.75 implied total for the Kings is 15th. They have an okay matchup. And oh my god, who gives a shit about this game? Both teams, nothing to play for. Kings are dreadful, except for when they play the Santa Cruz Warriors. Um, I hope I'm getting that name right. That joke's not that funny if I'm wrong. Yeah, there's Santa Cruz Warriors. Good. Now it's still funny. Uh, let's see. Sacramento, second best matchup against centers. Um, I think Willie Cauley-Stein is probably too expensive on FanDuel, but 5600 on DK looks really good. Uh, I wouldn't mind fitting him in there. I won't really have much of him on uh, FanDuel. And then the rest of it is just unappealing. Um... You know, if you want to use De'Aaron Fox in a GPP, go ahead. I uh, went for seven a couple nights ago, which is just lovely. Um, Buddy Heald is now $1,400 more than Bogdan on FanDuel, even though they're still playing close to the same amount of minutes. It was a week ago today that Bogdan played 14 more minutes than him. Uh, but Buddy heald has been going nuts. Last five games, 40 37, 48, 10, 33. Uh, I'm not paying that Buddy Heald freight. No chance in hell. Um, I am, however, willing to pay the Bogdan freight. So I'd, I'd pay 4,800 in a GPP. Uh, I don't want anything here. It's just depressing. Again, everything that you're looking at for Sacramento is GPP only. Um, Although Willie Colley Stein on DK is probably fine for cash. Uh, just, there are way better places to spend your money. Finally, the Detroit Pistons. 103.25 implied total. They are 2.5 point favorites in Sacramento. They have the 14th highest implied total. Boy, is this game dreadful. Uh, Blake, 8,100 on FanDuel, 8,600 on DK. Uh, really good matchup for power forwards and centers, uh, also for point guards. Um, I'm more than okay running Blake out there. Uh, he had four games in the 40s in this past two-week stretch. Uh, I can see that being a scenario where it continues. Um, I'd be okay with Blake. 10-6 uh, for Drummond. 8,900 on DK, which... Man, what what is that? Seventeen hundred dollar difference. Uh, yeah, you can have a boatload of Drummond on DraftKings and be plenty happy. Um, and it's not like he's even playing bad. Like he went for fifty and fifty three in his last two games. So yeah, you you definitely want to have a bunch of Andre Drummond, um, on DraftKings. He's okay on FanDuel. Uh, 10-6 is a pretty healthy price. You would need him to get to 53 just to be happy. Um, I likely won't have very much of him. Uh, you could talk me into more, though. And then Ish at 5,000. Um, <laughs> excluding this 15-point game he had in his most recent one, his previous five were 21, 21, 22, 22, 21. Uh, it's a good matchup. You know, they have the third best point guard matchup, but I'll have a marginal amount of him. I don't trust it too much. Um, 4,400 on DK isn't bad, but there's not a ton to like here on FanDuel. Um, I'll have solid amounts of, of Blake and then uh, a trickle of Drummond and Nish. 
So that's all I've got now. Let's plug this into the optimizer, see what we get. Um, it should be kind of fun. As I said at the beginning, we will be doing, or I will be doing, a uh, live stream tonight. I think it's a perfect night for it with all the early games. Could get kind of crazy if people start getting scratched, but we should have some fun. And I feel good. I just want to do it. All right, randomness goes up. That's a boatload of Jeremy Lamb. Surprised he actually showed up in not all lineups. Gimme Lamb. Gimme Bam. Um, Gimme Campaign. Give me Giannis. Oh, we'll see what we got. Like, I like this without KCP. I would probably pivot off of him there and go to... Do I have any money? No. Maybe I wouldn't. I would want to, at least. I'd like this without Dwight. I'd like to drop from Dwight to... Yeah, maybe nothing. I like everything about most of these lineups, except for, like, one spot. Like, I wouldn't want Blakeney here. Maybe the balance isn't as good as I thought it was. That's going to be interesting to see. I do like a lot of this stuff, though. And it's going to be really... You know, I'm going to have a lot of exposure to Lamb and Bam. The Lamb-Bam exposure. I don't know. There should be a better name for that. I don't have it, but, you know, I'm sure somebody does. Let's see what we got going on, DK. I'm really anxious to see how much Andre Drummond pops up because I feel like it should be a lot. Yeah, it is. Lamb, Millsap, Payne. I'm um, yeah, gotta nerf the shit out of Blake and E right now. All right, so let's grab Lamb. Let's grab Drummond. Grab Denzel Valentine. We'll grab Campaign. We'll grab Darren Collison. We'll see where we're at. That's fun. Collison, Payne, Lamb, Giannis, Brooke Lopez, Ish, Denzel Valentine, Andre Drummond. I like that a lot. And then I'd probably entertain this one. Collis and Payne, Lamb, Aldridge, Jokic, Ish, Valentine, Drummond. Uh, you know, Aldridge's price is a bit better on DK. Same for Jokic at 8,800. Yeah, so it's going to be a fun night tonight. I'm really excited. Perfect, perfect slate size. Eight games is great. Um, I'm excited to play. Uh, live stream will start at 6. If you have any questions in the interim... Um, feel free to hit me up on Twitter or in the comments here or on Reddit. Uh, it's going to be a big week, guys. I promise you that. Um, other than that, I'm done. So uh, best of luck tonight, and I'll see you in 11 hours. Bye-bye.